from Christian fundamentalists, you guys. It is part of the role of the Council's parliamentarians to react before it is too late. How authoritarian does that, is that a threat, you know? Um, and they say, you've got to separate religion from science, and that's what they're trying to do here with some legal action and other things. Whereas, the, again, the view that there's a God and logic has been a boost to science as opposed to setting it back. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out how it would be such a threat to them when actually it gives them the information they need to logically look at creation. I think I have a response to that. I, I really believe, since we're talking about showing film the last few weeks on the different Hindu groups and meditation being an accepted way to, to reach God and bring all sorts of people together, the Roman Catholic Church has been uh, promoting meditation for many years. Thomas Merton, Teilhard de Chardin, Henri Nguyen, some of the famous writers, many others, and they are now promoting it heavily under the Pope. We can get statements from popes promoting meditation. And we've talked about altered states of consciousness. I used to be into that. And it, to me it's very clear that altered states of consciousness that the Bible warns against do not be charmed. You know, in the Old Testament, charmers uh, uh, chanting and into, into seances and hearing from spirits, that it opens you up to demonic activity. And we hear it, we've shown film on some of the top um, rock and roll musicians, Led Zeppelin, uh, Jimmy Page said, well, the way you do it now is you don't get promoted, you listen to, you get in tune with a spirit or spirits. And he talked about waiting in his room for these spirits to give him great material. They learned that from the Rolling Stones. The Stones would do that. The Stones were tied up doing that kind of an opening to, and they were even openly making films with Anton LaVey of the Church of Satan, Satanist films, the, the Rolling Stones. And so many other rock groups and people that are famous have gotten, they said they've gotten their music from these spirits that reside within them. Keith Richards of the Stones talked about that. Um, Carlos Santana, and it goes on and on through many, many famous rock and roll people, and especially today with this promotion of 666 and rock music. We've talked about that. It's, it's hitting society on all sides. Altered states of consciousness. Meditate. Become one with the cosmic consciousness. And I think that's where, to answer that question, that's where these guys are headed. They want the society because Satan <coughs> wants everybody to be, I really believe, demonized. Instead of having the Spirit of God in them, which happens when you're born again, the Spirit of Christ comes to dwell within you. Satan has always been jealous, wants to be as God, as the Bible says. Right in the garden, garden, he said to, to Eve, you know, you be as God if you do this. He, and the, the Bible says, he, he wrestled against God to be as God. And that's why he was demoted, if you will. And, uh, and that's what he wants. So the, the threat then is a, a spiritual exposing of their deeds. I guess. And, and that's what we're doing tonight for the limited audience and maybe some other people down the road will hear more of this. You know, and, and that's interesting, Mike, because, you know, Jesus was very clear about they refuse to come into the light because the light will expose the deeds of the darkness. Mm. And they loved darkness rather than light. So that makes a lot of sense on why we would be such a threat to them because it's, it's he who, who is in us that is greater than he who is in the world. And this book is the only book of religion that has all these prophecies and the only book that starts with in the beginning God created everything and the only book that's considered such a threat you look at the that's religious right. books of, of other faiths and you know this this council isn't talking about these other religions and talking about how Hinduism is a threat or <laughs> or Islam is a threat surprisingly they're not talking about <laughs> right. about you know fundamentalist Islam being the greatest religious based threat no they're talking about uh, Christianity and creationism although Muslims are creationists so they believe you know they've got a distorted view of the Bible they believe of course that the Bible was changed around the time of Muhammad we can prove that isn't <laughs> you true know, through the Dead Sea Scrolls that proves it go ahead Jim. You, you know Mike I, I got to chuckle a little bit but because this is like a philosophical oxymoron because these the European Council who are admitted evolutionists 
are saying they're threatened by Christians when evolutionists don't even believe in God. They believe they were involved. So what a what an oxymoron that is to say that 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 that's the biggest threat to us when if I believe in evolution, that doesn't even exist anyway, so why should it even be a threat? Well, I I guess they think there, we maybe we come up with a theocratic state, and there are <laughs> yes. some people who want that. I, so I maybe got, they feel that would be backwards because it was backwards in the medieval time. Medieval time, Jim would be right with you. Medieval times, that was a threat uh, with the Roman Catholic Church, which preaches a false brand of Christianity and still wants to control the world and did control most of the kings in in Europe at that time, if not all. So I can understand a little bit of that. But true Christianity has nothing to do with the Roman Catholic Church. Jim, how are you doing tonight? Good. How are you guys doing? Good. 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 Hey, I just wanted to say, uh, just wanted to congratulate you guys for your show. And I think you guys are doing what God wants wants you to do, uh, is to uh, is to tell the truth. And and you know, I wanted to say one other comment. Um, I've listened in the past, and I've heard people that have called, you know, and are kind of questioning you guys. And and it's so simple, you know, it's it's right there, but in other words, uh, we we can't like make them believe it. They have to. The truth is right there before them. They're just choosing not to believe it. So it's like, you know, you, you know, it's it's either you say yes to Jesus or you say no. And I mean, it's that it's that simple. And so um, even if we try to give them all this information, eventually they have to decide on their own what they're going to believe. You know. And so, um, but I like I said, I appreciate what you guys are doing and. Um, and also one other thing, I think you guys are right on what you're talking about right now, that's, uh, that there's a movement to take God out of everything, you know, and it's like, um, no matter what, you know, with this country is founded on Christian principles, they want to remove everything, and slowly, it's being done slowly, where we're kind of being put to sleep, you know, and not realizing it, and I think we need to stand up, and there's a lot of Christians out there, but we're not really taking a stand and saying, hey, we can stop this, you know. And the, the leftists, they're more organized and are really forming this kind of like this belief that we don't need God. Jim, could I ask you, uh, did you become a Christian at an older age or were you brought um, up? Well, around high school age. And I've, I've had like, you know, ups and downs, but I would say in the last five years or so, I'm, that's, you know, I want to go you know, do put it put it in his hands, you know, and let him be in control of my life. Good for you. Well, Jim, how do you know that Jesus is the only way? Well, it says it in the Bible and I believe the Bible. It's you know, he it's he it's it's known to me, I mean by it's like it says, the truth is put in your heart. It's like I it it's pretty obvious. <laughs> I mean, and what he's given what he has to offer, nobody can offer that. Um, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No, not there is a way, but I am the way, and the truth, and the life. And anyway, I, I believe the Bible is true. There's no... Yeah, and that's a promise. God says, if you shall seek me with all your heart, uh, you shall find me. And so, you know, it yeah. becomes obvious God opens up your mind if you're really seeking with all your heart for truth. Jim, thanks for calling. We've got uh, hey, another... Jim. You guys, God bless you. Thank you, you Jim. Take care. Good evening, Barrett. How are you doing? Yeah, good. How are you? I'm good. Um, I've got two comments, and then I'll probably take it off the air. Um, okay, you you believe in creation in the sense of that um, God created everything in the universe or the cosmos out of nothing. Is that what you're, what, like 6,000 years ago, what does it say in the Bible? Yeah, well, if you, if you take the accounts in Genesis literally, uh, you can add up some of the dates they have in the chronologies in Genesis chapter 5 and chapter 11, for example. And this is something that uh, not only Bishop Usher did back in, in the day, but so many others at that time also did. And the consensus pretty much throughout history up to about 18 uh, or about 200 years ago or so was that the creation was very young, around five, six, seven thousand 7,000 years. What, what's the second point? Okay. <clears throat> well... I don't agree with creation in that sense, that, that the universe was empty of space and empty of matter, empty of time, empty of everything. Basically, there's nothing. There's nothing to even not be. I mean, nothing. 
I don't believe in that. I, I believe that because things are right well, Barrett, now. Barrett, let me ask you. We've talked several times. You call several times. We've talked on the phone a bit.